Okay, we, um, we got to work a bit with the textures. Um, <laughs> So we want to drape some stuff on top of this guy, um, and again all the analysis has been done in GRASGIS. Um, that also means that you, you want to make sure that the extent of your OBJ data and your DSM is the same. And that, because if you want to drape your, your texture on it, you need to have the same geometry size uh, simply. So, um, it was a bit also complicated for us to generate those because we wanted to do everything in Agisoft all at the same time. So that's that's something that you need to um, to basically notice that when you want to um, import export your OBJ, also export your DSM and use the same region and extent for both of your your uh, meshes and also your DSM and your uh, GI software. So once you have that texture, it's exactly the same size as your object in the Blender. So let's go ahead and remove whatever material is um, currently on this guy. Um, you can do that, make sure first of what the, the object is selected, and then go to your properties editor here, and then you have the materials. You might be familiar with this from your previous assignment. Um, the way to remove the material is click on this minus icon here, and you removed one, and then you remove the second. Now you have a white slate here. So how can we get them back? Oh, you want to save them? There, there are ways you can save them. Well, we at this point assume that we don't want them anymore. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you've moved your object in Blender, when you import the DSM, will it still be able to find your object? Even so, if not with all the good things about OBJ, there is this one bad thing. OBJ is not your reference. Um, so the position and the location would be um, slightly off, but the good thing is the scale and distortion is the same. Because basically if you are working in another projection system, um, always you'll end up with something which, is a, which is, has a different uh, distortion than the other one. So if you make sure that everything is exported in the same georeferencing system, at least you know that the scaling mm -hmm. and the distortion is the same. Mm -hmm. um, but then you need probably to move things around okay. if you want to align them together. Okay. I mess up. <laughs> Is it being <laughs> recorded? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I had your instructor crying. <laughs> so, um... We can keep it for, like, uplifting the hearts of the people. Struggling. Let's create a new material. Um, you can you can uh, press um, plus sign here and the new icon here. You can do it either here, doesn't matter, both ways. Um, once your material is created, um, you can rename it. We we'll start with the solar analysis, and I just call it solar. Come back to our old friend node editor here. You can see again that you have the diffuse um, shader. You can either add a node that the uh, image texture node here. You can also add it here. Um, to image texture. And once you have that image texture, click open, and then hover to your folder and select the irradiance map. Yeah, um, Yeah, I think it should automatically because all you added manually. That's okay. In the event that something is oh, stuck, okay. is there a way to cancel? Okay. Like a processing action? Yeah. Normally not. Image right. texture and then the ir irradiance. So um, add a new node. Um, <laughs> Add a note called 
add a node called texture coordinate. Where do you find that? Um, so normally the way I do, I do add and then I click search. So now you have this guy. Great. I was wowing it. Generate the beauty of that image. Um, so this was a very simple material. Um, let's go to a bit more complex one. Um, you can save. You can save this material for yourself by just pressing the plus button here. So once you make a plus button, Kate creates um, a clone, and you can change it. Um, and now let's call this one Butterflow. Did it save the first one? Too? Yes, so when you browse here, you can see the solar in your Add thing. Search. And you know what zero means uh, next to the solar? It means that it has zero users. So there is no object that this material is currently assigned to it. But it's safe. Uh, did you did you uh, push the boss button plus button before? So you you most likely uh, yeah, have. Click. I have. Just yeah. <laughs> you do that to, uh, to like <laughs> anchor it. Thank you. I no. didn't go through the last. Uh, there's a plus button down at the bottom and a plus button down at the top. So like this guy. No, that that no, do not do that. This not guy. That yeah. yeah, I pressed that one. Yeah. And then I can change it and should make another one. Yes. Yeah. What happens if I run it without the SIM, I think? Will I freeze my computer? No, I'm so not sure. Oh, it would slow you down a bit. Okay. Yeah. What happened? It, it just replaces the solar with water, f water flow every time. Maybe, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Oh. So, right, I see it here. Uh, it looks like a one. That was much. Mm -hmm. Yes, and one of the... Oh, yesterday when we so had the... That's the invitation. Um, the guy showing us the, the candidate yeah. showing us the. Uh, yeah. Oh, there you go. We had this beautiful yeah. image of all the lakes in Arctic, and it really looked like impressionist painting. Yeah. It was yeah. incredible. Do you remember that? So it was beautiful. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen a lot of these large PhD dissertations. I have seen it. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. So um, now we want to do the water flow. And um, so once you have this material already set up, it's just a matter of changing the texture in your image texture. So browse, browse into your folder. Um, now select your waterback.png. There you go. You have the water flow draped, but it's, it's black. So it's not very appealing. You could otherwise make it uh, gray and, and grass. Uh, but the intent here is that we make all those back areas masked and transparent. So we can, uh, can basically overlay it on, let's say, an order photo or a relief map or an aspect map, whatever is more relevant to your analysis. Um, for doing that, we just need to add a transparent node. And you can search transparent BSDF. Uh, you will find it there. Uh, and then we also need uh, a mix shader node because we want to mix it with something. So I will disconnect the uh, the material output and connect it to the uh, to one of the mixed shaders, 
and then connect the shader into the surface. Um, so that means that I have one of the materials there, but I want to know basically how to how to basically assign the degree of uh, so this factor, if you remember, that's the degree of the mixture. Mm -hmm. And once you assign a map to the factor, if you remember again, that means that you're doing things not anymore numerically, but you're doing things specially. So if I apply this F this to FAC and then get the color information from my water flow, basically what I'm saying to this is that get the black in make the black information transparent and the rest um, not transparent. And if I add another node, let's say um, a diffuse shader node, So the way that the transparent BSDF works um, is that it gets your color information of the image. Whatever black means zero, like the RGB information, and the other ones have some information. So it assigns the to, to, to the extent of the numerical variables, it assigns transparency to them. Black means it's all transparent. So um, once you assign the transparency, that, that map into this mix shader, it means that, hey, I want only these areas to be um, hidden, and then the rest would be applied to the second material. So let's say... So let's say, let's, let's me maximize this. I have this one, which is a simple solid material. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, awesome. Ah, yes, you need a second one. And then I have this whole group of the water flow. <laughs> All right, so this was our water flow thing. And this is a mixture, which mixes the water flow map with the solid map. So if I make this, let's say, red, you expect that you will have the water and then otherwise red. And then oh, otherwise red. So the black areas are transparent, the otherwise red. Yes. So if you want to have, that means that if you want to have another map, you can just need to assign a texture node to this red guy. And for doing that, I'm adding another texture, image texture node. And then change, uh, and then connect the color to this guy. Um, and uh, for the second material, I'm assigning um, the relief map. So let's go over the node network again, do some explaining. We have two image texture nodes. Uh, one is our water flow, one is our relief map. And uh, both are assigned through the views to a mix shader. So our mix shader says we want to, we want to mix the water flow and the relief together. But how do we mix them is through a transparent node that gets the color information of the first one and discards the black information and replaces with the shader. So that's how these are combined. And when you oh, go back, you'll see yeah, this. Yeah, they click some of those. Like Does it matter screen. for the mix shader, like which one is connected where? Because there's two 